Now that we set up an AI agent, in this case an appointment booking agent, it is time to also add some functions because without certain data that has been captured and being fetched, we cannot really provide a booking agent. If we take a look at the AI agent first, let's see what kind of functionality do, that we need to add towards this booking agent. So after all of the user details have been captured, then we need to fetch available time slots, right? So what we can do is we can go towards a function where we are going to say, capture user details. So now that we have filled this in, we can also again, generate the function prompt or insert it ourselves. But first, let's say we're going to fill in the parameters that we want to capture. So the first one will be first name. You can say in the side, the description, capture the first name of the user. We can also mention if this is required just for now. So let's say put it to required. And once we have the first name, we want to save it towards the system field first name. Now, there is also a really great feature, which is memory. If you enable memory, then the system will first check inside the chat conversation if the value is already existing. If yes, it will automatically fill in that value and skip the question towards the user. If we want to add another parameter, we can just press the button and then we can say, we also want to capture the last name. Description will be uh, capture the last name of the user. And then we can save it towards the last name system field, also enabling both of these toggles. The last one that we want to capture is email. And if we go with email, we can say capture the email of the user. Validate by proper email formatting. We can say required, also memory, and then choose the system field email. Now, once this is done, we can also call a specific function call slash workflow. Before that, let's just generate the function prompt and let's see based on the description, what kind of prompt the AI can come up with. So let's say confirm. And then from here, within just a few seconds, we'll have a complete prompt. As you can see, skill capture user details. This skill captures essential user information, first name, last name, and email. It ensures that the email provided is in a valid format. Prompt the user to enter the first name, request the user's last name, ask for the user's email address, validate the email format using a red regex pattern. And here we have a, an example. If the email is valid, store all the details. If not, prompt the user to re-enter a valid email. Then we also have some constraints, as you can see here. All inputs, first name, last name, and email must not be empty. The email must confirm to st standard formatting rules. Then we have some formatting rules. Ensure input is trimmed of leading and trailing white spaces, which is really, really important for uh, email, right? Then we also have error handling. If validation fails, inform the user of a, of a specific error, for example, invalid email format, and allow a predefined number of attempts to re-enter the email. You can, of course, customize this prompt, but for now, let's leave it as is. The only thing that I will add towards this specific section is ask for each user detail separately. What we have noticed is if we don't add this guideline in, then that means that most cases, all the information that we require are being asked in one single AI response. And that is not something that we want to do. Once we captured all the function parameters, let's also trigger a workflow because the next step will be to fetch available time slots. Let's select a workflow. 
And for the workflow, I already pre-built a simple workflow, which is fetch time slots. So let's go with this one. And then you can see you can return the result to the AI agent in the workflow action, AI actions, AI function result. So if we're going to save this function, let's take a look at how this looks like inside the workflow. As you can see, I already built a really simple workflow where I'm checking if a CRM contact ID has any value. If yes, I'm going with a go high level CRM a fetch free slots action and otherwise I'm first going to create a new user a new contact to create that CRM contact ID because when booking the appointment we need that contact ID as well if we take a look inside then you will see for the create contact that we just fill in all the system fields that we already have and we just captured from the previous function right and then we are going to output the contact ID that we get with when testing the request and save it towards the system field CRM contact ID. From there, we're going with fetch free slots. And for this, if we take a look, then you already see that I filled everything in, but basically you will need to know your calendar ID and you can fetch that from the action get calendars and then select your calendar that you like to. Just copy and paste that calendar ID can also put it inside of a bot field if you like to. I just inserted it manually. Then for the start date, I went with the system field today, which will then always count towards the rest of the end date, which will then be, I set it to three days, but you can also, for example, set it to seven days, or you can also just give it this format. So that's totally up to you. I find having the end date in this format is just as easy, just fetching the available week. Now under the user ID, if you want to book the appointment towards a specific user on the calendar, you can do so. You can again fetch that from the available options. We have separate videos on how to fetch those, uh, but for now we will leave this blank. And then we have the time zone set manually, but you can also request this as an additional parameter inside the function. Since for this use case, we assume that all users come from this specific time zone, we will leave it as static data. What we get returned will then be the available time slots, which we will then be able to save under this specific section. You can then save it towards any JSON field that you like to. We saved it towards this JSON field called time slots. If we press save, then the next step will be to return the fetched values. And you can do so by going with an action node, going towards add item, AI actions, and from here you can select the AI function result. You can then return the fetched values from this node back towards the AI agent to continue the conversation. This allows you to fetch available time slots after capturing all the user details and then returning those available time slots back towards the agent to continue the conversation and display the next step inside the conversation, which will be display the fetched values. An additional bonus step is if you want to return something else than just a text-based reply towards the AI agent, then you can also use a text message, which has now been enabled and unlocked inside workflows. Inside, you can send different kinds of messages so not only a text message but you are also able to send cards rich media for each step depending on the channel that you are interacting from so that way you will be able to also send media files while using the ai agent if you have a for each step for example a user needs to select from a range of products you can also return those results back towards the AI agent using the exact same AI function result. The next step is to take a look at the AI agent to see what else that we need to provide. If we take a look here and take a look at the skills, then we see that we have covered the user detail capture, the time slot selection, and then the last step, 
Once the date has been chosen, then you need to show the available times available for that date. Then we get to skill three, which is the appointment booking. This skill needs to handle the actual appointment booking. Once the user has chosen the date and time, you are to provide the user with the overview of the appointment details and ask them to confirm. Once the user confirms the appointment details, you are to save the chosen date and time in its original format as you received it when fetching the available time slots. Once saved, you will need to book the appointment. When the appointment is booked, you are to notify the user as such. So the only thing that we are missing is the appointment booking itself. And basically what happens here is that this can be provided by the AI agent, but this step to save the actual appointment booking details, that is something that we will need to save inside of a function to save the actual parameter. We can do so by going back towards AI functions and then say, So what we can say, description, this function needs to save the user's chosen date and time for the appointment in its original format. What we could say is, and then we can basically return the time slot again. And then it should save it inside of this type of value. So let's just select the three time slots again. And this will give the AI agent reference that it needs to save it in its original format, which has been stored here. Let's say that we are going to add a function parameter, which call which will be appointment date time. And let's say make this required memory on. And let's say this captures the user's chosen date and time for the appointment. And we can also save this, let's say appointment, or let's say selected appointment date. Let's keep it at that one. Then we are going to call a function flow because what needs to happen here is once we save this appointment date and time, we need to book the actual appointment. We can do this inside of this workflow. So let's choose a subflow. And I have an agent booking safe chosen appointment value. So let's choose that one. Let's save this. Then let's go towards this workflow. As you can see inside of this flow, we have a really simple book appointment section where we can create the actual appointment. As mentioned before, we are using Go High Level in this case as an example, but you can also connect towards your own booking calendar, of course. What happens here? is what we can do is we have a calendar create appointment where we save the user contact ID. And this is just an example value. We have the calendar ID. We have the selected start time, selected appointment date, as you can see here. And this is just a random format. The end time we can leave empty. We can give it a static title or you can have something inside of a bot field, depending on the appointment that you want to make. It is important for Go High Level that you set the appointment status to confirmed to allow it to sync with your appointment calendars inside of Go High Level. You can have an assigned user ID if you so wish to. You can have the appointment address. So if it's a physical location, you can change this. I just have a static location set to Google Meet. You can also provide a Zoom link and such, but that is totally up to you. And we have the ignore date range and to notify set to default. So that is basically everything that we set right now. What you could also do is test the request, see if everything is working and then map the response towards the function output result. What you could also do is just say, if request fail, then you could go with an action, AI action, and then function result, which you could say, So that is something that you can, could return towards the AI agent and whenever an appointment has failed. And you can also connect a follow-up step like notify an admin, for example, through any kind of notification means that are available to 
your setup. If we say continue to the next step, we are assuming that the appointment has been booked properly. And then we could go with an action and go with AI action function result. And here we could say, correct the grammar. And this will then be returned towards the AI agent, notifying the agent that the appointment has been booked successfully. Now comes the time that we need to activate these functions inside the AI agent. And the way to do this is by going back towards the AI hub. And from here, you can go towards AI agents, edit. And then if we scroll down, we have the AI functions here to choose from. So we can say, capture the user details. And then you will see the function prompt of this user details directly here. You cannot edit it here because we can do so inside the function itself. This is just for reference sake. The next function that we need to have is capture chosen date time. And we can actually rename that a little bit better. For example, save chosen date time to give a proper reference towards the AI agent that this function needs to be triggered whenever the user confirmed the appointment and we then need to return and save the chosen date and time. So what we can do is go back towards the functions and rename. So let's say instead of capture, we could say save chosen date and time, just to give it a little bit more reference. Also, as we have just seen, is that we don't have a proper function prompt. So let's generate it based on the description and let's see what we get just to make sure that everything is working properly. So here we have the skill is responsible for saving a user selected date time for appointments, ensuring that it retained the specified original format, retrieve the user's chosen date and time input, then validate the input against the required format inside of the time slots. If the input matches, save it in its designated storage and then confirm successful saving by returning an acknowledgement message back to the user. This is something that we can change slightly. So let's say it's just a slight reference on what the AI needs to do next, but it does help in its, uh, in its replies. Let's check the considerations, ensure the input is accurately parsed and matches the specified formatting rules. If the input is in an incorrect format, prompt the user to re-enter. That is not needed because we need to handle the formatting. So we can choose to remove that specific guideline and then for constraints, only accept date and time in the format within time slots, reject any inputs that do not conform to this format. That is not really needed. So let's remove this because we already have proper guidelines in place here. Error handling, if saving fails due to a storage issue, provide an error message detailing the failure and suggest retrying. Let's also remove the error handling for now. And now we can save this function properly. Let's recheck the AI agent to see if everything is stored properly. We have the function prompts, we have the capture user details. And here, let's see our capture user details. And if we remove this and then re-add this, then you will see steps for execution, skill, safe, chosen date, time, also being added towards the AI agent. And we should now have a working AI appointment booking agent with just one note that handles the entire conversation and just two really simple workflows. These two workflows that fetch the available time slots and book the appointment towards the user. In the next video, let's preview the AI agent to see if we can get this working fully.